Hey everyone, we are going to start a mini series of how to use Zoom on these TriTech tools. So with Zoom, you've heard a lot about it, maybe you even tried it yourself. There's so much to do with it. So we're going to just start at the beginning and then as the videos progress, we'll learn more and more about what to do. So you might have a paid version with your district or you might have the free version. So depending on what you have, it limits you on what you can do. So I'll show you the maximum potential for Zoom. And then if you have the free version and you don't have access to these um, features, that's okay because you can still function off of the free version. I did for quite a bit, although um, our organization does have the paid version, so you'll see the features enabled with that. So the first thing you need to do is clearly sign in, make sure you have your username and your password. You might need to connect with your district on how to do that specifically. I know there's a different process for everyone, but once you have your login, and you're in Zoom, you're going to see on the side here, scheduling meetings, webinars, all of that. The first thing we're going to do is actually configure our settings. This is extremely important because as you create meetings, many of the settings are defaulted to what you have here. So you really want to make sure that you focus on setting those up. Okay, so if I go to settings, approach this as if I'm a teacher thinking about using Zoom for my classroom. Maybe I'm doing synchronous instruction or asynchronous instruction. We'll kind of toggle between those two ideas as we engage in um, this um, learning about Zoom. Okay, so as you go through your settings, a lot of them are participant based, you know, what you want your participants to be able to do. And some of it is your own personal preference as well. So even the first one, start meeting with the host video on. I always do that. You don't have to. You can turn it off and then turn it on when you're ready. That's up to you. As I scroll down, though, a couple of key settings to have is your audio type. Allowing your participants to join by telephone and computer audio is key. So that way they can have a couple of different options um, as they communicate with you. Now, this one, join before host. I have this enabled, but if I'm a teacher and I'm going to meet with my students live, I would actually disable that. Because what we don't want is students accessing the um, Zoom meeting before you're ready to begin it. So turn that off. And then when they get on and they click into the Zoom, if you're not there yet, it will just say waiting for host. OK, and they won't be able to communicate. So you're going to want to unclick that. And then the next thing really has to do with the password. So using the personal meeting ID um, is something that is optional for you. If you're meeting regularly, this might be something that you want to enable, but it's not a must. I would suggest using a password when scheduling the meetings. There's been a lot out lately about people really um, getting hacking into people's Zoom meetings and sharing inappropriate content and discussion. And we, we don't want that to happen with our students, obviously. So requiring a password can be really, really helpful um, for that purpose. Okay, so as you scroll down, there's a couple other password ones um, as well. Again, I would just put one password on it and you should be fine. We don't really need the meeting reminder and whatnot. And as you scroll down, um, chat, if you're going to want students to participate in um, a chat, you know, as you're teaching, asking questions, I would enable that, but I would disable the private chat. So then that way, Whatever message they send, it will say their name and it will be public to everyone, but they will not have the opportunity to message each other um, without you knowing because there will be no way of, um, of really seeing what they wrote. So I would disable that as well. You can save the chats. I haven't really ever gone back to look at mine, but um, if you want that disabled, you can. And then there's some things about sound, totally your preference, whatever you'd like. As you scroll down here, I would make sure you have your co-host enabled too. All right, check back for more in our next video.